Hey, welcome to the Pat Tomasulo podcast. Pat Tomo. Pat Tomo. Pat Tomasulo, baby. From the depths of the Tomasulo household. <laughs> we're in the depths. We're in the, the basement. Yeah, but. The basement of the Tomasulo household. You hung on that for a minute. Did I? A little bit. From the depths of the Tomasulo household. <laughs> Alongside producer James. Hello. Producer James in all of his sleeveless glory today. It's, it's 90 degrees out. So hot out. Not a chance this guy was wearing sleeves today. No way. Took him off the airport. Wait until he sees the video I took of him walking up to my door. Oh, great. Love Just, it. he looked like he looked like he was entering the arena for a UFC fight. He was so intense, that face. I'll take it. Just like I'm gonna fuck this podcast up. Listen to Kanye. That's that does that. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, getting ready. I thought so. I know you're kind of uh, anti Kanye right now, but not anti Kanye music. We're separating the artist from the art. That's correct. Right. So you could still watch like the Cosby Show and feel okay with it. It's a great show. Yeah, a lot of lessons in the Cosby Show. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta tell you. I. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay. Let's get into it. Yeah. One and a half minutes into the podcast. For sure, dude. Great show. Isn't it? If it's on, I mean, I, I don't really watch much TV at all, but if it's on, yeah, I can I can separate the art from the artist. <laughs> I I challenge you. I challenge you to be in your car and have an R. Kelly song come on <laughs> and turn that off. It's impossible. You can't. Dude. It's impossible. They're all jams. I hear you calling. Here I come, baby. You're not turning that off. <laughs> when he tells you to step in the name of love, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna step in the name of love. <laughs> <We're stepping. laughs> Telling you all about when a woman's fed up. <laughs> you're not turning it off. Did you watch all trapped in the closet? No. Oh, you got it. You got it. There's like 87 parts. I know. You got to do it. I I don't. It's so fun. I'm really tired of people asking me if I've seen things. No. I'm watching one show at a time, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. We'll get to the show I was watching that I just finished. Yeah. That was a real piece of shit. What? We'll get to that in a second. Uh, All right. Disagree. First off, it's freezing in my house. 90 degrees outside. It's about 11 below in here. <laughs> you had to see what I was doing before you came what over here. What were you here. doing? I got, look at this. First off, you're still, you got your, your, your no sleeves. I'm in sweatpants. You are. A t-shirt, a hoodie. I only unzipped the hoodie because I've worn this hoodie a bunch of times, and if anybody's keeping track of my outfits, I was like, oh, I'll show them a t-shirt instead. <laughs> Not that they are. Not that the multitudes that are watching this on YouTube are keeping track of my outfits. Right. I was freezing. My wife, you you, you got to look in that closet over there. I got a, I got a terry cloth robe that I bought for a bit that I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just been sitting there. And my wife was like, put on the robe. I'm like, I don't want to put on the robe. She's like, you're putting on the robe. I'm tired of hearing how cold you are. <laughs> she put me in a robe. And I had little fingerless gloves that she uses. I was that cool. You're getting up to look at my. Yeah. He's getting up to look at the robe. Yeah. It's not. It's not fancy. It's just a, a generic white terry cloth robe. It's to the, your left. Yeah. <laughs> put it on? No, don't put it on. You're sweaty and disgusting. No, no, don't put that on, dude. Honestly, you'll gross me out. <laughs> Plus, that won't. That won't fit you. I think it's a medium. Put it on. Um, I don't want to put it on. All right, give me the robe. This is the wrong <laughs> I was sitting I was sitting at my desk for an hour like this. And I did <laughs> Oh, that's my favorite thing, dude. I didn't uh I had the hold on. I had the uh the hood out. Yeah. Yeah. And I had glo- and I had gloves on too. <laughs> and I had gloves on. And I was at my little computer and I was doing my podcast work. And I was sending emails in a in a in a robe. Look at me. You look great. 
Look at me, I'm a grown ass man. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man with a with a successful career. Do you think like do you think any CFOs are in their home office right now? Wearing a terry cloth robe. This is new money. This is what this is. This is what a bunch of hillb you give a you give a you give a couple of hillbillies some money. This is what you get. You get <laughs> Oh man. And she's bouncing around upstairs in like a t shirt. She's totally fine. It's nice in here. She's hundred and thirteen pounds and she's fine. And I'm freezing. You're not cold at all in here? It's because you just came in from the cold outside. Enough. You came in from the outside where it was hot and I like a cold house though. What did Letterman say? Sixty nine degrees. Sixty nine. Letterman said that? Yeah. When did Letterman talk about the ideal temperature for a house and why? Some interview with that. No, just the ideal temperature. Well, that's the ideal temperature for a comedy show. 69. It's 69. Yeah, I can get that. Yeah. Yeah, I can get behind that. But I'm also, I think our, our, I can't check my phone right now. It's over there because I'm a good boy. But I think the house is set to 68 right now. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. It only took us 65 podcast episodes. I've been leaving it over there. <laughs> You've been leaving it over there since I shamed you. All right. Since he had two phones going off, like 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 he's. Uh, I did have two phones. Like he's a publicist. <laughs> like he's the publicist for somebody running for Congress. <laughs> this guy with his two phones, and his texting and his foldable phone. I love it. Oh man. You look great in that. I had a. Uh, can I take it off? It's your show. You can do whatever you want. I just want to see it. I feel. I feel like I've been peer pressured. To wear my. <laughs> to wear because now I'm actually getting a little bit warm. Okay. I'm getting a little bit warm. <laughs> you want me to put it back? No, it's fine. Stay where you are. Right. Say, ooh, it's. It is nice and soft though. Yeah, it looks great. My back hurts. It looks fine. Oh. I had a. Uh, God. Do you ever have some moments? You you're a big DIY guy. Yeah, I'm reading the next thing and I'm upset. What do you mean? In the notes. Oh, in the notes. Yeah, I'm upset about it. Well, here's what happened. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Okay. We had a light switch break in the house. Uh-huh. You know, it happens. You flip it on and off a number of times, yeah. and it it breaks and yeah. whatnot. So I say, oh, okay. Straight, single-pole dimmer switch. Not a three-way switch. Not a four-way switch. Should be easy. Yes. So I, uh, this was a whole ordeal. <laughs> so oh, God. I go to the Home Depot, uh-huh. and I get my switch. There you go. Nice dimmer switch. This is a good dimmer switch. It looks like a high-quality item. Yeah. So I leave my house, and I say, all right, let's get to work. First step, obviously, you want to turn off the electricity to that particular area so you don't kill yourself. Correct. Well, I go to our, our panel in there, mm-hmm. and uh, I flip it, and it doesn't turn off the electricity. Oh, no. And I say, huh, well, that's a problem, <laughs> because I am not going to risk this. Yeah. So then I uh, flip another one. Nah, that one doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So then I start... Flipping breakers all throughout the house. None of them are labeled correctly. Not a single breaker is labeled correctly. So I'm like, oh, let me turn off the small appliances in the basement. And that turns off the master bedroom what? lights. They're all wrong. Is- Every one of them. Here's how wrong they were. I think that light switch, the basement lights, was number 11. Yeah. On the on the panel, yeah. In reality, it was number thirty-seven. Oh That's how wrong they were. So there's the first issue we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. And so this this explains one of my later decisions. Okay. So then we go in. I finally find the one, right? Uh huh. And I unscrew the the uh, the plate. Yeah. I unscrew the switches from the wall, and they're, like, not coming out of, of the recessed cut in the drywall. So I have to pull them out because there is so much wire that is in there that 
it was almost impossible to get them back in and get them flush. And anyway, yeah. So I bring out the uh, the sw- the switch I need to replace, and you know how like um, some of the switches come with the wires already in them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So you know, red to red, black to black. It's very self-explanatory. Right. That was the light switch that was already there. It was one that had wires already attached to the light switch. Right. Unfortunately, the one I bought did not have wires coming out of it, and you had to attach the wires to this. Are you to thread them? Yes. You had to thread them. And I didn't know which wire went to which anchor, you know. Yeah. Which screw? There wasn't like a diagram in the back? There was no diagram. They thought I was going to figure this out myself. And I said, guess what? I got to have this electrician come out anyway to fix this goddamn breaker box. Okay. I'll just have him replace <laughs> the light switch. <laughs> but I did it all right. I was I was ready to do it. I've replaced, you know, don't look at me like I've never replaced light I'm switches before. I've replaced light switches before. Mm-hmm. Okay? I believe you. I've re- Let me tell you something, James. Yeah. I've replaced a light switch in my day. <laughs> Many a light switch in my day. Yeah. But this one, I'm like, you know what? I'm sure I could do it, but I'm not positive in my... I'm not supremely confident in my ability to get this right. Mm-hmm. So rather than burn down this brand new house, or worse, kill me, I'll just let... The electrician do it. Mm-hmm. So I will not be criticized for that. I I will be criticized for the fact that I'm going to pay a guy to mow that front lawn of mine. That I will be criticized. Are you serious? For. Yeah. You know why? Uh, see, and I have a reason for this too. I don't know that I'm going to keep grass past this year. Right. So I don't know what I'm gonna do because you know we're doing the we're doing the turf in the backyard. Did I tell you this? No. We're doing uh, we're doing artificial turf in the backyard. Uh huh. Because uh, <laughs> what is, the disappointment is just it's permeating from you. It's like you could you could just be my friend and and not let your disappointment show. If I wasn't so. your friend. I would lie to you. <laughs> so we're do. You know why we're doing the uh, tell the me turf why. in the backyard? Because my wife wants it, and that's oh, well, pretty much all right. Okay, got to do it. You got to do it. Yep. I'm not gonna have this debate. Absolutely. Because for three months out of the year, it's an absolute mud pit back there. Right. And every time the dog comes into the house, she's wiping the paws and cleaning the paws. Uh, yep. Cle- I mean, great cle- decision. Cleaning clean the paws a little, a little much with the cleaning the paws. You got to clean the paws. You, be- but she's cleaning the paws. So anyway, we're doing the turf back there. <laughs> Good. So I might do, I don't know. I might do the turf in the front yard, but I wanted to see how much. I wanted to see if I liked it in the backyard first. See, because if you don't like it, you can hide it in the backyard. Yeah. If you don't like it, and it's in the front yard. It's all your neighbors are going to see you, and they're going to judge you. Not, not that I really care necessarily, but I don't want that. I don't want that gaudy house on the block with the with the fake. So I want to see how it looks in the backyard. And getting- if I like it, next year I'll do the turf in the front yard. So. Rather than drop five hundred dollars on a lawnmower, mm-hmm. I'd rather pay this guy ten bucks every other week. Yeah, he's here anyway. He'll do it. Yeah, I, I have no problem mowing the lawn. I just, you know, for the amount I'm going to spend on a lawnmower, sure. it doesn't make any sense. Are you getting that? Uh, that what uh, the Chicago blend? I am. Good. How do you know? Did we talk about this? You said I, I remember you saying Chicago yeah. Blend did a previous episode. So what? Yeah. So what I'm doing? Yeah. Is you know you see a lot of these houses in the neighborhood. They've got this turf. There are a couple on my block as well, and it's very short. Yeah. And it looks like uh, like, it looks like a putting green. It's like neon. It's green. neon, <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't look right. No. So I'm getting stuff that's about two and a half <clears throat> inches long. Yeah. And it's got thatch in it. Yeah. It's like eighty percent green, twenty yeah. percent yellow. So it looks like it could be Chicago grass. Yeah. I'll tell you, I was on the, uh, I was out near Midway yesterday for something for the morning show. Mm -hmm. You know, southwest side. Every, let me tell you something. Every single house 
on that block. Beautiful, lush green grass. Oh, yeah. Lush. Yeah. That's what you get when you have people who are not lazy <laughs> like me. Like those are people who, like everybody in this neighborhood, nobody's, re- they want nice lawns, but they don't really want to work that hard no, at they it. Don't. You go over there, you get, you know, blue collar guy who's like really a hard worker, <laughs> and you get my lazy ass. That's never, it's never going to happen with, with me. I'm never going to have grass. Every house, James. Oh, every yeah. house. Oh, yeah. Every house looked like Wrigley Field. I was like, I don't, what is going on here? Yeah. The worst house on that block was nicer than the best house on this block. I bet. Not even close. Yeah. Not even close. <laughs> I do have so I'm so torn about this fake grass. Look, no. She I said, know. She said do it. She to, said do it. She to, wanted it. She loves it. Have to do it. Got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. I mean, guess you got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I worked with uh, this past weekend. You Breaking Bad guy? Gomi. Where I worked with Gomi. How was it? He crushed. Yeah, I bet. He did. I bet. He was uh, he, he he murdered. So likable. Such a nice guy, he too. He looks really cool. Such a nice guy. For those of you who uh who don't know who I'm talking about, it's uh from Breaking Bad, Gomez. Hank's partner, Gomi. You know, Gomi is my homie. <laughs> Gomi is your homie. Stephen Michael Quesada, that, yeah, is his uh, is his birth name. I think, yeah. yeah. Fascinating guy, still in, still in uh, Albuquerque. Let me oh. tell you, I think he was, I think he was trying to sell me on moving to Albuquerque. Yeah, just talking about how nice Albuquerque was. And I gotta tell you, it sounded it sounded pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about how like, uh, you know, it's like it gets to like fifty. You know, but it's not, I didn't realize it's in the mountains, Albuquerque. It's not like Arizona. Arizona's the desert. Yeah, that's the desert. New Mexico is apparently in the the mountains. There's terrain there. There's terrain there. You get a little snow in the wintertime in the mountains. You know, up in the mountains, they get a little snow. Okay. But he said, you know, you know, 50 in the the wintertime. That's great. I was like, I could do that. Well, what's the summer like? He said, it's not, I mean, hot, but not like, uh, not like Arizona hot. Okay. Not like 120 degrees hot. Okay. We didn't speak that in depth about it. Sure. But you know, he was telling me apparently uh, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul and RJ like they all have houses out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like they all they all like Albuquerque and spend time yeah. in Albuquerque. Yeah. Yeah, dude, he crushed. He crushed. But you know, I'm I'm trying to do all this new shit. I feel like everybody's crushing. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, as if you would, like, <laughs> yeah. tested material. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Is it working, at least? It's, yeah, it's, it's doing. What do you have, like, 15 now? 20. 20? It's, here's the thing, and this is a little inside baseball. For those of you who've, uh, who've watched the special, mm-hmm. and if you've not watched the special, I implore you to watch the special. Do it. What a time to be alive on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pat Tomasulo comedy. I think that's my. Anyway, just look up my name. 120,000 views and counting. Let's go. Right? Is that where we're at? Yeah. 120,621. Is that correct? Yes. I can't. I have a hard time reading. If you've not seen it, please, please watch. It's great. Tell all your friends. James and I, of course, very proud of this. Look at him go. But you know, ideally, you you try and uh, by the time you start doing headlining shows again, which I'll start doing in the uh, in the winter, ish. Mm-hmm. You know, you like to have mainly mainly new material. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> Because here's the thing, there's there's two sides of you. There's the one side of you some days that you're like, I don't give a damn. I'm doing this new material. <laughs> right. I'm gonna work this new material out. And I don't care if this crowd likes it or not. The new material has to be birthed, James. <laughs> there are gonna be some labor pains. 
But guess what? When this is when this bit is delivered, it's gonna be a beautiful, healthy <laughs> bit. And then there are other times where you're like, you know what? I'm having a bad day. I need to crush. <laughs> so <laughs> just gonna do a bunch of old shit. <laughs> just, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. Somebody in the crowd told me I had a fat ass and I need to <laughs> I need to feel better about myself, it's so still, I'm just going to murder. It's still in there, huh? Now I don't still know. Still thinking about that? Okay. All right. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't need some drunk woman on a late show. Whole patty cakes. To uh to remind me about my uh <laughs> my ass. <laughs> Cake. No, so uh, so talking about TV. Yeah. Are you an Ozark guy? Love it. Did you finish it? Did. All right, listen. It's the first half of the new season, right? That's what came out. No, it's done. Oh, the other half came out. Yeah, you didn't see that. No. Oh shit. You can talk about it. I don't care. No, no, I don't want to blow it for you. I don't care. I, I'm never. I don't have time. Talk so you it. saw the first half. So what? What's the last thing you saw? The last thing I saw was. Um, it all blends together. I'm like, what's her name? Was like the cousin le- getting shot. She was like leaving the trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When what a scene that was. Oh huh? my god. What a scene she delivered. That that Ju- Julia. I forget her name. Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. But let me just say this, and I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it because eventually James is going to watch it. And I don't know why James is going to watch it because it sucked ass. What? Ozark. That was one of the most bullshit finales. Does anybody know how to end a TV show anymore? Here's what you do. All right? If you've got a um, a show that's coming to an end, and you're like, huh, how should I end this show? Here's what you do. You call up the creator of Breaking Bad. Yeah, Vince Gilligan. You call up Vince Gilligan, and you're like, hey, tell me how to end this. <laughs> because no prestige series, out of all of them, Sopranos, Blue. The ending to The Sopranos? What are you talking about? Are you bullshitting me? No. You like the ending of The Sopranos? Yeah. All right, well, okay. Why don't you sit this one out then, James? Oh, my God! How did The Wire end? I don't remember how The Wire ended. Um, I want to say that ended satis- That ended in a satisfying way, I don't remember I being mad about it. No. I was never necessarily mad at The Sopranos ending. Yeah, what do you like about it? I found it to be a cop-out. I didn't find it to be as brilliant and as, as um, you know, daring and as... Fitting with the theme of the show, as a lot. Just, just let's let's not keep people guessing. <laughs> you know, let's actually, just show them what happens. David Chase, creator of Sopranos, gave yeah. an interview. Uh, he said Tony got whacked. Yeah, he said he died. Yeah, on accident. He said. Okay. But he okay. said it 15 years later. Yeah. Why don't you just show it? It's, 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 and you know. end it that way. You end it. Where's your imagination? Where's I don't. The, I listen. Don't you love to? There's a reason. Did you re-choose your adventure books? There's a reason I watch TV shows. Right. And it's to rely on the imagination of other people. <laughs> I don't want to think that hard. All right. But that blew. That's fair. Game of Thrones blew. That was terrible. That so, blew. Yeah, gross. <clears throat> Ozark sucked. It sucked. Was it worse than Game of Thrones? Here's what I'll say about Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones was a victim of its own success. Yeah. And what I mean by that is I did like the Battle of Winterfell, even though it was a little oh, dark. The one you couldn't see at all? Even though it was a little dark. Okay. If you if you pumped up the vo- the uh, the brightness on your TV, um, was that was that was a, a pretty powerful episode. Mm-hmm. You know you what know the, be- the scene in that movie that was the craziest was? Um, or in that show, in that finale, or not, whatever that episode, whatever yeah, yeah, bullshit, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. even talk. Um, when all the Dothraki, 
just charge in with with the with the lit the flaming flames yeah. and then like one by one just the flames start just start out. getting doused that was a great scene that was i was like oh shit. great yeah but here's what i'll say about game of thrones game of thrones was a victim of its own success right. meaning you were judging that those final six episodes against yeah. five seasons six seasons of excellence of of some of the best television of all time sure yeah easily that show, I would say, I mean, I, I love The Sopranos, don't get me wrong, but right. from a technical standpoint, an acting standpoint, a story standpoint, a, a special effects standpoint, like, I don't know that there was ever a better show than, than Game of Thrones. I really don't think there was. But if you would have compared the final six episodes of Game of Thrones yeah. against any other TV show, sure. it's, still it's still great. head and shoulders above anything else right. on TV. But we all compared it. <laughs> To Game of Thrones. Game and of Thrones. by comparison, it sucked. It's not very good. It was not very good. No, it wasn't. And the, and the finale was terrible. Yeah. God. But I'll tell you what finale wasn't terrible. <laughs> Breaking Bad. Right. That dude should just be the script doctor. Yeah. For all of Hollywood. That was a finale that gave you everything you wanted. It answered every question you had. It tied up every loose end there was to be tied, except for Jesse being a fugitive from the law. But they needed a movie for that. Right. Which was fine. Yeah. The movie was fine. <laughs> but God did Ozark blow. <laughs> just like who lived, who died, mm -hmm. just did not did not jive with the actions of of all of these characters, especially throughout the course of the last season. There were people who made it out alive in that show that you're like, there's no, there's no way. There's no way. And then they had this one character do a whole 180 on their behavior that made no sense. Okay. You're trying to you're yeah, trying, I'm to trying to figure it out. Figure it out. I have guesses. You're not. The last thing you're not going to figure out. Anyway, how many episodes is the is this? Like six? It's a good question. 7. It, should I should we even bother? Should we even bother? We've come I don't know. Far. See, I am I that's how I am. I'm, a I'm of the type I'm I am the same way. Yeah. So even if somebody tells me it's it's dog shit, <laughs> I'll still like. Well, I still gotta see how bad. Yeah, yeah, right. I still gotta see how much dog shit it is. I gotta, I gotta, you know. I That's gotta, what I'll do this week. I'll watch Ozark and I'll report back. See, I'm I'm concerned that you'll like it. I want to like it now, really bad. If you like it, I don't think you will though. Okay. It was rushed. There was a there were a lot of loose ends that they tied up in the last episode that like it felt more like a um a season finale more than a series finale. Sure. Is is what it what it felt like. Lost did that. And that was really never cool. watched it. See, I won't watch that at all. You need it you I never started it. You should still watch it. It's my favorite show of all time. I can't. I can't watch something knowing that the ending is so terrible, especially not, if there's such a big commitment. It's not terrible. It's not what you want. Yeah. Okay. But it's not terrible. Yeah. Well, it's a apples, apples to oranges. Right. Apples to apples. Whatever. <laughs> whatever the fucking <laughs> saying is. It's a great. How many seasons of Lost is are there? Uh, five. It's got to be more than that. What are the like? Six. Fifteen episodes a season. It's network, so it's got to be a lot of. It's like twenty-two. Oh, are you out of your <laughs> mind? Well, there was a writer strike, so. Are you crazy? The, the, one of them has like twelve, I think. No, I come on. That's a great show. Come on. I got Better Call Saul, and I got that Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. You watch that show? No. Neither. Oh, that show's that show's good. Neither one. You don't watch Better Call Saul? Couldn't get into it. Really? It was too boring. No kidding. Season two, we, me and Linda were like, "What? Huh? Is this? I love it." I'll give it another I chance. I love it. But that Yellowstone, let me tell you, makes you want to be a cowboy. 
you watch these guys, you're like, they're such men. All the guys on that show are just men. And I realize how, how, you know. And I'm like, hey, asshole, you just, you had a guy replace a light switch. <laughs> Do you think, you think Kevin Costner over here is calling a guy to replace a light switch? They're riding around. They're just, they're just men. They remind me of all of Amy's family. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. All of her Flo- Flo- Florida family. That's what these guys are like. Just out in Montana on this show. Wrangling cattle. Just fighting all the time. Drinking. Hell just yeah. drinking and fighting. Riding horses. Saying all kinds of inappropriate things to each other. Just men. Listening to country music. Smoking cigarettes in the day. Nah, no smoking cigarettes. Drinking uh-huh. beer. Drinking lots of beer. Rip. It's the one guy's name. His name is Rip? His name is Rip. I think that's his Christian name. Nobody calls him anything other than Rip. They got flashback scenes to when he was a kid. Everybody calls him Rip. Okay. His name is Rip. That's cool. He just whoops ass. <laughs> Oh, he's yelling at everybody, getting everybody in line all the time. Yeah. You shut your fucking mouth and do what he tells you to. I'm like, oh, that's a man. <laughs> like, you can't talk like that at a real job. Oh, no, you cannot. No, you know what I mean? I wish you could. I wish my boss would be walking by and be like, hey, don't give him any bullshit. You heard what he said, Jimmy. <laughs> it's one of the characters' name. Yeah. Jimmy, why don't you get the lead out of your ass and go do your job? Right? Yeah. That's what you should do. You should be able to talk like you should be able to talk like Yellowstone at regular jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my goddamn spreadsheets? Huh? <laughs> huh, Wyatt? Where's my shit? That's just how they talk, though. Right. They just talk, you know. It's how men talk. It's how men talk out on the ranch, James. Uh-huh. Yellowstone. <laughs> God, I I can't even imagine how many how many yuppie idiots like me are going out there now to vacation because they watch the show and they see it's it's incredible. Yeah. Dude, every it is the most beautifully shot show not necessarily directing wise Mm -hmm. just like the beauty shots of what's doing out there sure well it's a gorgeous Uh, landscape oh my god is it you know oh and they probably hate people like me out there (laughs) you know (laughs) me just driving out there with my wife in my acura (laughs) you know yeah Uh, with my illinois plates and my dog that wears a scarf. <laughs> oh, God damn. Another one of these idiots from the big city. I'm like, hey, guys. Somebody want to teach me how to ride a horse? That'd be fun. <laughs> is this where they shoot the show? Is this it? Is this the, is this, it looks like it. It looks real familiar. Man, you got all these people going to Ukraine right now. How how do you, how does Joe Biden explain this one? How does Joe Biden be like, I'm not going to Ukraine, but I'll send my wife. <laughs> I mean oh, no, wait, what? Joe Biden went to Ukraine. What? Yeah. Where have you been hiding under? Oh my God. Wait, what? I don't she went out there and met with the uh the first lady of, of uh of Ukraine. Now listen, I'm not saying that Joe Biden should go to Ukraine. If I were Joe Biden, I'm not sure I would be going to Ukraine. However, I also don't think I'd send Amy out there. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're like, listen, it's a little it's a little too hairy for me to go out there, but you go out there and let me know what's doing out there. I don't know how long she was there. All these people are just dropping. All these heads of state are just dropping into Ukraine. Isn't that that a little wild? Like, 
I mean, at any point, Russia could just say, yeah, we're going to target Kiev now. We're haven't, gonna, haven't they been shelling Kiev? I think it's like the outskirts. I, I think it's more of a it's Mariupol. It's been like two months. They haven't made it in there yet? I, I don't think there's been an all-out assault on Ukraine. I think there has been some shelling of, of uh, I'm sorry, of Kiev. But I don't think it's to the extent that they've... Right. Listen, if she's able to do a walk-and-talk photo looks, shoot through a school, it, nice. it can't, be, can't be that hairy right <laughs> no. now. You two's out there doing a concert in a yeah. subway subway tunnel. What was that? I guess I guess the Zelensky asked him. Would you go out there if Zelensky asked? See, I was you just thinking there? of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just. He called this was, right this now. was where I was going with this. Yeah. I mean. Do you, do you just ignore that call? When your agent says, hey, listen, got an opportunity for a gig. Oh, yeah? Where, where exactly? Uh, it's a, it's a, a subway station in Kiev. Huh. Oh, okay. Now, have you talked to them on the phone, or has this just been an email? Email. All right. Well, maybe we just pretend like we never received the offer. Hey, Pat, we got a uh, President Zelensky here. How you doing? Good. Good, President. So listen, I I, uh, I had an idea just to help boost morale. I was wondering if you can come and do stand-up. Uh, where exactly? Well, it's going to be in a, uh, well, a bomb shelter, but it's really a subway tunnel in Kiev. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. What, what what's the date? Uh, May 9th. <laughs> uh, if you would have, May 9th. Uh, that's a tough one right there. I'm actually booked that day to to or else I would. If there's any other date, we'll, we could do May 10th. Ah, yeah, but May 10th I'm I'm got a I'm going to be traveling from the from the gig I'm doing on on May 9th. I really wish I could. God, what 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 are the odds? <laughs> I'd really love to help. But ah, oh, just just that timing is just not working out. That's tough. Yeah. Cuz there's that guilt of uh you know, I think the dude called them directly, which is you can do that when you're a president of a mm-hmm. of a besieged country. You can get the number to Bono directly <laughs> and and see if he'll do the show. Notice there's only two of them. Yeah. It's only there's only Bono and the Edge. The other two are like, "Are you out of your goddamn mind?" Yeah, we're going to stay home. We're just going to sit this one out. This is wild. War in 2022 is just crazy. I mean, you got you got things like this going on. They're just they're just Bono and the Edge just doing a concert. Everybody's just visiting, dropping in, all smiles, hugs. They're just, you know, they're 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 tweeting back and forth at each other. The president is doing videos on Twitter all the time. The whole thing is just uh it's just wild. They did uh you know they did that victory day. That's the big thing in Russia. Okay. You know, that's their their big holiday. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, when they do their military parade and they do all this. This is before Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And Ukraine <laughs> Ukraine trolled them. And did their own parade with a bunch of Russian tanks that they've stolen from them. Oh, hell, that's sick. And they put it on social media. That's like, sick. could you have imagined this going on during Vietnam? Could you imagine? <laughs> like, it's just so bonkers. That's wild. You see, Russia's mad at your boy Elon. What did he, what did he do? Well, because he, he's providing internet service for Ukraine. Oh, yeah, Starlink. Starlink. And what did he say? Scroll down a little bit, won't you? He wrote, if I die under mysterious circumstances, it's been nice knowing you. That's your boy. 
It's not all he said. He said he would give Twitter to your boy, Mr. Beast. If he died? Yeah. He would give Twitter to Mr. Beast? Yeah. And what does he think Mr. Beast is going to do with it? I don't know. Make a contest out of it? I don't know. <laughs> He'd be good in charge, I think. He's cool. Mr. Beast rules. Mr. Beast is not doesn't strike me as the type that's <clears throat> necessarily a... Um, He's like the most successful YouTuber of all time. He's a great kid. Is that what I said? You didn't let me finish my goddamn sentence. What, what are you saying? I'm saying he didn't... Mr. Beast does not seem the type to me that's going to uh, advocate for free speech nuts on Twitter. You know what I mean? I don't see Mr. Beast being like, listen, it's time we let people start tweeting about Ivermectin again. <laughs> I, tell you, I don't see that happening. I don't see Mr. Beast being like, listen, we got to reinstate Donald Trump. He's got his lane... <laughs> He's in the middle. He does these, fun, you know, he does fun. It's a big prank video. We got a warehouse. We're going to recreate Squid Game. That's what we do. Oh, my God. Can you believe how crazy this is? Yeah. And that's fine. That's his thing. Right. But is that the guy you want to you wanna give yeah. Twitter to? I, I can see if he'd be like, I'm going to give Twitter to Joe Rogan. That would make sense. Oh, no. <laughs> but that would be more in line. I'm not saying that I want that. I'm not saying I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm saying that's more in line sure. with what Elon is trying to do with Twitter. Is that still happening? The Twitter thing is still happening? Yeah. He's still he? owning it? When is that going to take place? Has he actually said, what has he said he's going to do with Twitter? Uh, like, what is he? Well, is here's, he, here's something 39 minutes ago. He would reverse the Trump ban. He would allow Trump back which, on Twitter. I mean... Oh, it's been so peaceful with Dude. him off Twitter, hasn't it? I mean, I don't use Twitter because it's horrible. But like, as someone who doesn't use Twitter, I'm bring back. Yeah, I want to see those tweets. I don't know. Remember how funny it was? It was, was it funny? Yes. Was it really? <laughs> Look, it. Was it really well, funny? Now that it's over. Now that it's over, it's funny. Yes. But you know, he was the pre. Donald Trump was the president, dude. Remember that? What do you? Yeah. Oh no, I remember it. I, <laughs> I'm envisioning it happening again very soon. Okay, but it was funny. And look, I'm not a Trump guy, but man, was it funny? Bring him back. Who cares? Man, is this Putin nuts? What is he doing? Just, what is he doing while well, he's invading Ukraine? <laughs> Besides that. But it's just, you know, like, all right, so you look at this Twitter, right? Uh-huh. And how people think, like, there is this censorship in this country yeah. and how there's this controlling of the information, which is so insane. Yeah, it's not true. It's insane. Yeah. You know. They, they ban one guy. They ban Trump, and you would have thought, like, they were banning hundreds of thousands of people. They try and get people to stop spreading false false information about COVID. Right. I mean, have they overstepped their boundaries a handful of times? Perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps they have. But is this some kind of widespread, nationwide, all-encompassing censorship? No. No. Right? Well, it's a private company. They can do whatever they want. So, but you look at, like, just how, and again, I would say probably for the, we're at the worst point in our nation's history in terms of false information and partisanship and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That said, we're still a thousand times better than the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, so you look at, like, you look at, like, Putin. And just like the reasons that they're justifying the war in Ukraine. And he's like, you know, it's like it's like mad libs. He's just like, well, clearly they're Nazis. That's clearly that's well, what that he's, what he's <laughs> that's what he's telling. That's what he's telling the people in Russia. Oh, that's the propaganda they're using? Yes. He's like, you know, I wouldn't do this if they weren't Nazis. It's like, just pick the one thing. 
Whoa, dude. That's a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have to invade if they weren't all pedophiles. Am I right? <laughs> I mean, you know, you know how those Ukrainians be pedophile and all over the place. <laughs> right? I mean, really? You got to see them. They got swastikas all over that country. You can't throw a rock without hitting a swastika. You don't need to go there. Trust me. Trust me. Big Nazis. All of them. Big Nazis. I'll tell you. You know, you, you ask why we're bombing these Ukrainians so bad. They're in the sodomy. That's why. <laughs> or else we wouldn't. I mean, he's just throwing shit out there. That's crazy. They're Nazis. That's like North Korea stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, completely. You wonder the most amazing thing about Putin. Yeah. His girlfriend's pregnant. Despite all this, he's still getting it in. Good for you, dude. This is what he's, this is what. How do you find the time? Where and how do you find the time? <laughs> She's pregnant, much to the Russian leader's shock. Ooh, that doesn't sound good for her. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> how can this be? I've been in hospital uh. getting treatment. For <laughs> how are you pregnant? Three months. It's been four months. I don't know. How old is he? 69. Jesus. Enough of these old guys have... Enough of these old guys having babies. Well, she's 38. He's 69. He's going to be dead After you're 35. probably in 10 years. Oh, girl, what are you doing? What is she doing? You think she has a choice? No. Get out. Between him and Alec Baldwin, he's another one having another baby. Oh, yeah? It's 64 years old. I think if you have a baby Seven. past the age of 57, you should have to pay a $10,000 fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're too old. Yeah. You may say, Pat, who are you to judge somebody for having a child at that age. I'm the guy who's thinking of the 14-year-old who's going to have to bury his father. <laughs> That's who I am. <laughs> I don't know. I know when I was 14, if you had been like, Hey, Pat, come on in from playing. It's time to feed your father. I would have had some issues with that. <laughs> Old dudes. Dude, that's that's a weird. This is sixty-three. Weird. Alec Baldwin is sixty-three. Oh, He's gonna be sixty-four when he has a baby. Think of what that guy's blood pressure is like. What's he got? Another twelve years tops <laughs> Maybe. before he just keels over. And all his kids are young. Yeah, they're like tiny. All his kids are young. With that wife of his, Hillary. <laughs> I'm Ilaria. I'm from Spain. Yeah. I'm Ilaria. That's what I am. Ilaria. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> God, did you see this story about... Uh, this bad, what's her name? Bad Bobby? Bad Baby. Is that her name? Yeah. It's Baby? I, th I think. Uh, who cares? I don't know. Did you see she's the made like. Side girl. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see she's reportedly made $50 yeah. million dollars on OnlyFans? Yeah. And what does she do on there? Do we know exactly what she does? Probably 
what OnlyFans is used for, I'm assuming. Showing the, the boobies and the lingerie pics and all that stuff. Let's find out. She bought a $6 million mansion oh, God. in Florida. <laughs> what the fuck? She's apparently made $50 million on OnlyFans. Infuriate. Presumably while You know, I know it's a... Um, it's a scary time for women. Sure. I know that women in general uh, deal with a lot of nonsense in this country. Mm-hmm. I, I know that women are um, they're underpaid, they're underappreciated. They're, um, they deal with so much so much unnecessary hardship in this country. But I kind of feel like this <laughs> makes up for it. <laughs> you know? Oh my god. I kind of feel like the fact that you can go on OnlyFans and just show your feet yeah. <laughs> and make a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> like I kind of feel like yes, it sucks that some of you are going to have to drive 3 states away to get an abortion. The good thing is You'll be able to pay cash. <laughs> it's it's terrible, but the the opportunities that this OnlyFans <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm not making as much as my male coworkers, and that's wrong. Until you go to OnlyFans and just show your elbows, because somebody's got a fetish. For elbows out there. <coughs> Scantily clad photos and videos on the platform. I told you I got approached about going on OnlyFans. Yeah, what's... Come on. I still don't think it's necessarily the place for... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? More standard entertainment fare. <laughs> okay. I think maybe if I did this... Shirtless with nipple tassels on. Maybe that would... Well, I mean, look what that gets you. Unbelievable. Where's the kitchen? Look at the kitchen. I I don't want to look at somebody who has a nicer house than me. But this could be you, is what I'm saying. She made a million in her first six hours. It's unbelievable. How does that work, though? Do they do tips? Is that how OnlyFans works? They, or subscriptions they, and tips? They take a percentage of the... the Because I looked into this because of you. They get a percentage of the subscriptions. OnlyFans does. Yeah, small yeah, of percentage. Course. And then I think the, there's like extra content that you can provide that you keep all of. So if you do like, and like DMs and stuff, you do like private... DMs what do you mean DMs? Just a message? Yeah. Just a message. It's like cameo or something. Yeah. Not even a. And then there's there's a video. There's like yeah. Well, but I mean like like a message, a private message with a like a picture or video. Ha. Huh. Yeah. How about it? Yep. Lastly, I um. I continue to hate the um, American political system and just how mm-hmm. grotesque it is. Mm-hmm. J.B. Pritzker, mm-hmm. the uh, second coming of Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Fundraiser on Wednesday, uh-huh. hosting Biden. Biden's going to be in Chicago. For a DNC event in Chicago. Now, I don't know where the money is going to. Oh, to raise campaign cash for the Democratic National Committee. Isn't that nice? Uh-huh. Top ticket, $365,000. Uh, it's gross to even say it. What do you get for that? Influence, power, okay. a congressman in your back pocket. 
What does it help the normal everyday person? Doesn't help them at all. Doesn't help them at all. $365,000. Do you know... I'm here I am trying to get trying to get uh sponsors for my fundraiser. Look at this. What's the lowest? 25 grand just to get in the door. That's the top sponsorship level for my fundraiser. For my laugh your face off. And that'll actually help a person. Yeah. <laughs> that will that might actually change somebody's life. 365 grand to change nobody's life. What do we have taxes for if we're doing this? Well, this is this is for them to funnel money into the uh campaign chests of of all of their candidates. But man, if that doesn't just Make you insane. I don't know what does. You don't even get to meet the president for less than 100000 That's it, huh? Yeah. And you wouldn't, you would be amazed how many, um, you know, when you, I, I reach out to everybody for sponsorship for Laugh Your Face Off. Um, and I, um, you know, the bigger the, the businesses are, when you, you like these big banks and these financial institutions. Yeah. Bro, you can't even get past. This is the kind of shit they donate to. Sure. Right? Like yeah. They got their, their earmarked areas that they donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to. Mm-hmm. And you can't even get them to even look at your, your sponsorship packages. Mm-hmm. Which is all to say, <laughs> yeah. if anybody listening... <laughs> Yeah. Is grossed out by these these big political institutions, these big banks, these big financial institutions, and you want to donate to a cause that is going to change people's lives, then I would implore you to go to laughyourfaceoff.org. Our next event is September 24th. And look up the sponsorship packages on laughyourfaceoff.org. We have them from $1,000 to $20,000 and everything in between. And if one of them seems, and they're great exposure for your business, obviously you're helping people who need help and you're funding research and medical research, but it's also tremendous exposure. We sell out the the, uh, Park West every year, 700 plus people. Thousands more watching the live stream all over the country. And an incredible event. All that new material you heard me talk about, some of it might be done by September. I hope so. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Please, I do implore you, if you have five minutes to go on there and look at it, we would love to have you. You can email me directly, pat at patthomasulo.com. If there are any questions you have about the fundraiser, about the sponsorship levels, we would love to have you. We'd love to have you uh, join us this year. All right. Anyway, that's it. That's my, that's my plug. I'd love it if you, I'd love it if you, if you, if you checked out the website and joined us. All right. Listen, that's the podcast this week. Uh, on behalf of producer James, who's going to go watch Ozark, uh, I'm Pat, your host, and we'll see you next week.